President Bashar al-Assad receives an invitation from President Ahmadinejad to attend the summit conference of non-aligned countries. President Al-Assad affirms the important role of the higher constitutional court in terms of the constitutional laws and the integrity of the presidential and legislative elections. The People's Assembly holds its first session of the first legislative term and elects a speaker, his deputy and office members. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our news for today. President Bashar al-Assad received this morning a letter from Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, which included an invitation to His Excellency to attend the Non-Alliance States Summit Conference scheduled to be held in Tehran next September. The letter was conveyed to the President by the Iranian President's Personal Envoy, Minister of Communication, Ms. Rida Tokibur. Discussion centered on the situation in Syria. Taki Bor consider the present assault against Syria as being part of a wider scheme targeting the region as a whole. He affirmed his country's firm stand in support of the Syrian people in their confrontation of the current circumstances. President al-Assad said Syria has been able to overcome the pressures and threats it has been exposed to for years, and it is capable with its people's steadfastness to overcome the crisis. The new members of the Higher Constitutional Court, Ruslan Ali Trabulsi Matar, Malik Kamal Sharaf, and Jamila Musallam Sherbiji were sworn in before President Assad in the forenoon today. Later, President Al Assad met with the chairman and members of the court. He affirmed to them the importance of the court's role in terms of the constitutional nature of the laws and the integrity of the legislative elections, particularly after the ratification of the new constitution of the country and in the wake of the legislative elections held recently. The president wished them success in accomplishing their tasks. The People's Assembly today held its first session of the first legislative term of 2012, headed by the eldest member. The two youngest members were appointed in charge of the Assembly Secretariat. The Assembly members took the constitutional oath. Later, the Speaker of the Assembly, his deputy, the two secret secretaries, and the members of the Assembly Office were elected in secret ballot. Mr. Muhammad Jihad al laham was elected Speaker of the Assembly with a majority of 225 votes, and Dr. Fahmi Hassan as Deputy Speaker with a majority of 2,002 votes. al laham said following his election that Syria is at a new stage, which requires collective efforts to activate all potentials to improve the process of reform in the country. Today is the first session of the new parliament, and I think that it's going to be just a session for the voting for the new members of the board of the parliament and swearing about the new uh, people who are entering the parliament for the first time for the new session. I think that people are demanding a lot and I think that all the people who are elected as new members inside this parliament are going to do their best to fulfill the hope of the people in our country. I want all people who work in Parliament, he give something new for all the people in Syria. I hope so. Thank you. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister, Russian President, Special Envoy to the Middle East, Mr. Mikhail Bogdanov, has warned against the attempts to repeat the Libyan scenario in Syria, which would lead to catastrophic repercussions, particularly in view of the special nature of the Syrian situation. Bogdanov said the grave repercussions of foreign military intervention in Libya present a lesson for Russia, China, and other countries when they approach the crisis in Syria. He said if NATO resorts to the use of force in the Arab region, its member countries' geostrategic positions and the world balance of power will be weakened, not to mention their possible failure in realizing their objectives. Bogdanov referred to some states' attempts to compensate the loss of their traditional positions of hegemony 
which they had previously enjoyed in the domains of economy and politics and the world by relying on the use of military force. He added that certain sites are tempted by dramatic events in the so-called Arab Spring to introduce some changes in certain areas in their own favor and to use what he described military muscle show in order to invigorate their economy, ignoring the interests of sovereign states and the basic provisions of the international law. Lebanese President Michel Suleiman stressed that the group which kidnapped the Lebanese citizens is affiliated to the Syrian opposition. During a meeting held by the Council of Ministers, Suleiman pointed out that he sent a clear message to the personal representative for the UN Secretary General in Lebanon about the kidnapped Lebanese citizens. He added that he made contacts with some Arab officials and he sent a letter to Turkish President Abdullah Gol on the same topic. An armed terrorist group today assassinated a lieutenant colonel and his son in Jdaydid Fadl in Damascus countryside. A police command source and the governorate has been quoted as saying that a group of terrorists and a jeep intercepted the car of Lieutenant Colonel Wafiq Deeb while he was driving his son Haider, aged 13, to school. The source added that the terrorists opened fire at the Lieutenant Colonel Wafiq and his son causing their immediate death. In Idlib province, the authorities have clashed with an armed terrorist group in the forests and roads surrounding Psamis village in Jabal Azawiya. The group was engaged in planting explosive devices on roads to target citizens and law enforcement forces. A source and the governor had said the clashes resulted in the killing of several terrorists and the confiscation of various kinds of weapons, including launchers, machine guns, rifles, and flare gun. The authorities also dismantled six explosive devices planted by the terrorist group on the site. They weighed between 30 and 50 kilograms. They have been prepared to be remotely detonated. An armed terrorist group attacked in the city of Al Mayadeen in the Azur suburb, a convoy carrying border guards, resulting in the martyrdom of a number of border personnel and the injury of an officer. A number of terrorists were also killed and wounded during the clashes. Competent authorities also clashed with a terrorist group of three gunmen in Al Qusur neighborhood in Deir Zur who were attacking citizens, killing three of them. Meanwhile, authorities were able to capture a leader of a terrorist group. Competent authorities discovered a warehouse used by terrorists for manufacturing explosive devices near the Sultania neighborhood in Homs, along with a room for torturing citizens. The warehouse contained explosive devices and raw materials for manufacturing explosives. A room inside the warehouse was used for torturing kidnapped citizens. The occupied Syrian Golan received today the liberated prisoner Faris Shire from Majd al Shams. A Shire stressed that Syria will triumph over its enemies and the Israeli occupation will definitely end sooner than later. Hundreds of citizens from the occupied Golan villages welcomed the liberated prisoner Shire, who was arrested by Israeli occupation troops in 2010. Egyptian voters resumed casting their vote and the second day of voting to choose a new president from among 13 candidates. Voting centers closed last evening after extending voting period for one hour, ending at 9 o'clock. Voter turnout was relatively high as more than 50 million eligible voters have the right to cast their ballots under a full judicial supervision. Results are expected to be announced for the first round of voting next Tuesday, as the second round will likely be held on the 16th and 17th of June in case candidates failed to get the 51% needed. Finally, the national campaign for removing street posters started in Damascus with a large participation of civil organizations and volunteers. The national campaign for removing street posters started in Damascus under the supervision of the State Ministry for Environmental Affairs and in cooperation with the Syrian Youth Union and a number of civil organizations and volunteers.
We are cooperating with all sides to combat visual pollution caused by posters which are distributed across the city in an arbitrary manner. I would like to stress the importance of collective work done by all Syrian governorates to combat visual pollution. The campaign also seeks to reduce visual pollution and increase public awareness about the beauty of public landscape in the city's main streets and alleys as many volunteers have become more educated about the crucial necessity of protecting the environment and keeping the metropolitan centers clean and healthy. Yeah, and we're here at the campaign to clean uh, some of the uh, media campaigns have been done to the people who are running for the parliament. Uh, we're doing the campaign at uh, Aleppo Street and we're hoping to uh, make a big effect today and, and by the next campaign we will try to remove everything else from the s street in Damascus. I hope that in the future whenever we have any kind of elections uh, that the people who run for the uh, People's Council not to uh, put their pictures in places which are uh, making some kind of pollutions we we call it the eye pollutions the eye pollution is a problematic uh, things in Damascus all city especially and in other uh, places of Damascus this campaign aims at protecting the city's elegance and its beauty as Damascus symbolizes the city of Jasmine the campaign is planned to remove the street posters left behind as a result of the recent election campaigns for the People's Assembly. This campaign is designed to help the governorate of Damascus improve the beauty of the city in cooperation with a number of civil societies and groups who are exerting huge efforts to reduce the dangers of visual pollution. The State Ministry for Environmental Affairs has launched several initiatives which seek to improve volunteer work through motivating the Syrian youths to get more involved in environmental activities and help protect the environment and minimize pollution. With this, we end our news bulletin for today. For more information about Syria and the region, you can visit our website in English, syrianline.sy. Up next, the latest business.